Hello all, welcome to our next session in uh, transportation engineering. I hope if you remember we are in transportation, under transportation, highway, railways, uh, traffic and airport. Under highway engineering we have some four chapters we have discussed, history, geometry design, materials and payments. In the topic under geometry design we are in the section 5. I hope you, if you remember you have seen the cross sectional elements, we have seen the side distance and we have seen something related to horizontal curves where we have seen the super elevation and extra widening and some problems in there we are going to the next session called transition curves okay so welcome to the session so in the, what do you mean by transition curve if you remember so far we have studied something about straight roads okay so we know in straight roads the radius will be infinite okay because straight for the straight line the radius is infinite and we know you no need requirement of a super elevation in the straight roads because super elevation is required only when the whenever there is a uh, overturning so when the centrifugal force is coming there will be a overturning or a skidding will happen so to avoid overturning we will be providing super elevation right so in straight roads i hope uh, you know that there is so no requirement of here also there is a straight road there is no requirement of any uh, super elevation but when, uh, whenever you are encountering a horizontal curve, something like this, okay. So when you are encountering something like this, there is a radius. So you have, you should know that there is a radius. Whenever there is a radius, so obviously you should know uh, there is a radius has been coming down from from the straight road is infinite, and in horizontal circle curve there is a radius r. Also, when the super elevation is zero and the super there is a super elevation in the horizontal curve. So you cannot suddenly introduce right from the straight road to horizontal. So if you see, whenever there is a super elevation, if you introduce, a, I will come to this point. When you introduce a sudden radius, when the radius was infinite, I hope if you remember the formula mv square by r, centrifugal force formula. So if you substitute the straight road, there was no centrifugal force; it was zero. But when you are introducing a sudden radius, okay. So obviously there will be a sudden value, there is R value. So there will be a sudden some kN or some force will come which will make your vehicle to sudden skid. Okay, we don't want to have that. Similarly, also we don't want a sudden increase in the super elevation. So there will be a super elevation at this point. We don't want that to happen suddenly. So we are introducing a concept of transition curve. You can see this is a transition curve between that straight road and the horizontal curve so that you can gradually introduce everything whatever I'm, i told you now we can gradually introduce like gradual introduction of uh, radius and gradual introduction of uh, gradual reduction of radius and gradual introduction of the super elevation and the gradual introduction of a uh, extra widening so if you see this is the tangent point and this is the curve point so the transition curve we our objective is to find the length of the curve required so that we can gradually introduce everything okay so this is called the transition curve so we are going to introduce a small transition between the straight road and horizontal curve so if you remember there is another term in fluid mechanics you would have studied for a layered flow in pipe the Reynolds number will be less than 2000 it is called laminar flow for a turbulent flow okay so the Reynolds number is greater than 4000 okay this is a turbulent flow so there also you would have studied something called transition so where it is not a laminar where it is not a turbulent okay so it is in between so we have to find a definite region in Reynolds number such that the flow is not laminar and the flow is not transition uh, sorry turbulent okay so in the in that sense you should know the term says is a transition so coming to highway engineering concept so the transition will be nothing like uh, nothing but uh, the small transition from a straight road to the horizontal curve okay so this is uh, uh, my introduction I hope I made you clear what is transition curve. So our objective of providing a transition curve is you can see we have to gradually introduce the centrifugal force. I told you centrifugal force will be zero on the straight roads and the centrifugal force will be some value. Some uh, mass of the vehicle at what speed it is going and what is the radius of the curve. So I have to gradually introduce this one and uh, turn steering gradually so the driver has his comfort and security and we have a uh, gradual introduction of super elevation and we have to gradually introduce the extra widening and also it will enhance the aesthetic appearance of the road if you see when the straight road is connected with the horizontal curve it will be something like this but the same straight road you see this pink color pink color is the transition curve when the straight road is connected this is straight road okay you can see
can say this is straight road and this is transition curve this is horizontal curve so when i introduce a transition curve so it will enhance the aesthetic appearance and also you can see there is a shift shift right so if you didn't provide a transition curve the curve is somewhere else since you provided a transition curve there is a shift of the main curve coming inwards okay coming inwards so in this way also you should know that shift so it may be asked in one marks so what is the shift shift of the main curve is because of the introduction of transition curve the horizontal curve has been shifted inwards okay so coming back to the objective so it will enhance the aesthetic appearance you can see it will enhance the aesthetic appearance of the road okay so these are our objectives and uh, i hope you i made you clear what is the objective uh, of providing a transition curve and since i am telling you curve it will be something like uh, either you can have a x square curve x cube curve log curve you can have any type of shapes okay so but our curve should have a following requirements okay this conditions this curve uh, should satisfy okay so what are the conditions it should gradually decrease from infinite to maximum okay if you remember the radius of the curvature our uh, curve's radius should vary from uh, infinite at the straight road and end it will, should be infinite i hope you remember and it, it should reach the value of r and rate of change of centrifugal acceleration should be a almost a constant okay so we should have a rate of change of centrifugal when i am accelerate i should not have a different different centrifugal acceleration not only i am accelerating that v square by r is the right if you see mv square by r okay so we can say mass into acceleration right as per newton's law so this is the centrifugal acceleration v square by r so this v square by r should not so it is a function v is a, at least a vehicle property but if you see the radius radius is the road property so when the radius is changing uh, i hope it uh, i made you clear in the horizontal curve the when you are going to meet a this is straight road when you are going to meet a horizontal circular curve there will be a radius so we cannot have a sudden introduction of a centrifugal force okay so if there is a sudden a centrifugal force means centrifugal acceleration because the mass v is not going to change so the you should introduce a centrifugal acceleration gradual manner okay so you you should comply that condition also and also the third point if you see they have given the radius of the transition curve if you see the radius of the transition curve you consider this is the transition curve it is infinite at this point and it is r at this point right so the radius is should be inversely proportional to the length you have provided okay so if the length is keep on increasing length of the transition curve is increasing the radius should come down okay so if the length is very small the radius should increase so this three requirements you are transition curve whichever shape you are choosing this uh, shapes you are choosing that if it is satisfying then that curve you can provide it as a transition curve in that sense the common transition curves shapes in the market is spiral or clothoid shape okay it should be clothoid shape you can see the spiral or clothoid shape is this one so this is y x axis this is y axis and you see this is the spiral curve you can see this is the spiral curve something like this okay you can see the shape this is a spiral curve and this is a lemniscate lemniscate is this shape it is like a leaf uh, shape leaves outer boundary it was coined by bernali so his name been used bernali's lemniscate you can see this shape and cubic parabola cubic parabola i hope you know you would have studied in your schools and colleges or you could x cube type of curve okay and you see uh, cubic parabola is ideal for indian railway boards okay in railways they often use this cubic parabola shape okay we will see in railway engineering we'll be seeing in some other sessions so in railway engineering i'll tell you why the cubic parabola is chosen but uh, they have in a, for now you should know uh, the railway board uses the shape of cubic parabola and you should know that rate of change of centrifugal acceleration okay i told you uh, centrifugal acceleration is v square by r rate of change of means nothing but d by dt correct rate of change of means in per, as per time rate means as per time only mostly we will say d by dt of v square by r so it is not constant in lemniscate or cubic parabola shape okay the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration you cannot maintain a constant for the, in these two shapes so irc has suggested this spiral or clothoid shape because of its properties what are the properties the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration is constant in a spiral or clothoid shape and also the radius is inversely proportional to length as our requirement was there so having these things in mind and it is very easy to lay 
ஈஸி ஃபார் நாட் ஃபார்முலா ஈஸி ஃபார் இம்ப்ளிமெண்டேஷன் ஸோ ஐஆர்சி ஆர் சஜஸ்டட் டு யூஸ் ஸ்பைரல் ஆர் க்ளோத்தைட் ஷேப் ஓகே ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஸ்பைரல் ஆர் க்ளோத்தைட் ஷேப் திஸ் இஸ் யூ கேன் சி எஸ் அ பெர்னாலிஸ் லெவனிஸ்கேட் அண்ட் திஸ் எல்சி இஸ் த லென்த் ஆஃப் த கவ் ஓகே ரோ இஸ் அ கான்ஸ்டன்ட் அண்ட் தீஸ் ஆர் த ஷேப்ஸ் யூ கேன் சி ஷேப் கவ் இஃப் சம்படி ஆஸ்க் யூ இன் இன்ஜினியரிங் காலேஜஸ் யூ கேன் சூஸ் பட் எனியோ ஃபார் எக்ஸாம் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ யூ ஷுட் நோ வாட் ஆர் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஷேப்ஸ் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் த ஷேப் வாட் இஸ் த ஷேப் வி ஆர் யூஸிங் ஃபார் அவர் ஐஆர்சி ஓகே ஸோ கம்மிங் டு அவர் ஃபைனல் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் ஆஃப் திஸ் செஷன் வி ஹாவ் டு ஃபைன் த லென்த் ஆஃப் த ட்ரான்சிஷன் கவ் ஐ ஐ ஹோப் ஐ மேட் யூ கிளியர் லென்த் ட்ரான்சிஷன் கவ் வில் வெரி இன் ரேடியஸ் ரைட் த ரேடியஸ் வில் பி இன்ஃபைனட் ஹியர் அண்ட் ரேடியஸ் வில் ரீச் ஆர் வேல்யூ ஹியர் ஸோ அவர் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் இஸ் டு ஃபைன் தட் லென்த் ஆஃப் த ட்ரான்ஸ்மிஷன் கவ் ஸோ ஹவு மச் வில் ஹவு மச் சுட் பி த லென்த் ஐ சுட் ப்ரொவைட் ஸோ தட் ஐ கேன் கிராஜுவலி இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் சயின்டிஃபிக் ஆக்சிலேஷன் ஐ கேன் கிராஜுவலி இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் சூப்பர் எலிவேஷன் அண்ட் ஐ கேன் யூஸ் ஈவன் அடாப்ட் டு த ஃபேக்டர் ஆஃப் த ஃபார் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டோபோகிராஃபிஸ் ஓகே ஸோ யூ நோ தெர் வில் பி சம் ஃபார்முலா யூஸ்டு டு டெட்டர்மின் திஸ் ஒன் எல் எஸ் ஒன் லெட் இட் பி திஸ் எல் எஸ் டூ யூ வில் கெட் த்ரீ லென்ஸ் ஓகே தெர் வில் பி த்ரீ ஃபார்முலாஸ் யூ வில் கெட் த்ரீ லென்ஸ் யூ ஷுட் ப்ரொவைட் த மேக்ஸிமம் of ls1 ls2 and ls3 so maximum of this three we have to provide so i will tell you the first point to gradually introduce the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration i know and uh, sorry we know the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration is a constant right for spiral or clothed shape so if you see v square by r rate of change of so i am using a concept of time instead of d by dt per time i have chosen that's why i have separated by minus you can see by time and we know length is equal to vt right we, we have already studied this length equal to vt in your school physics and also we have studied in lag distance in stopping uh, side distance and also d1 the vehicle uh, uh, traveling speed during a reaction time in overtaking side distance also we use the concept of vt so instead of t i will write ls by v and bring it to the numerator i will say v cube by lsr equal to that rate of change of centrifugal acceleration okay so from there you can see i have derived this formula ls1 equal to v cube by cr where irc has suggested how to use that c 80 by 75 plus v where v is in kilometer per hour if you substitute so this will be 0.4 if you substitute you should know that the c value will be in between 0.4 to 0.8 so ls1 equal to v cube by cr is the first formula if you satisfy this condition you can c is a constant right rate you can maintain a constant rate of change of uh, centrifugal acceleration so that is included and the radius is included if you substitute all these things you will have your length of the transition curve so this is your first formula you can memorize if you didn't understand anything just memorize this ls equal to v cube by cr as the first formula second formula is based on super elevation okay i hope you studied clearly about the super elevation from our previous sessions and also from your reference textbooks you see this is the super elevation we are going to raise the outer edge so this is the theta and i hope you if you remember this b is the width of the road means it includes both uh, extra widening and also the total width okay so if you remember our super elevation is nothing but tan theta opposite by adjacent okay so if you see <coughs> our objective in transition curve is to reach the capital e right gradually we have to reach the capital e how gradual is based on the rate at what rate you have to go and reach there so that is a capital n okay this capital n this capital n both are same the n is nothing but in what rate you will you are going to reach from if there is a straight road and if there is a horizontal curve and here we have a super elevation consider okay here consider it is a 30 cm in straight road end point we have 0 cm at what rate you have to reach like for every 150 cm 1 cm rise something like that okay so at what rate you should reach mostly this 150 is a very common term 1 in 150 is the standard rate of attaining that super elevation okay means for every 150 cm 1 cm rise so to reach the 30 cm i hope you know you should multiply this much length you want right understood for every 1 cm i have to for go forward of 150 cm you can see to raise the height of 1 cm i need to go 150 cm so to raise the height of 30 cm i have to go 150 into 30 times right so that is how this formula came okay eb into n eb is nothing but capital e i have shown here to reach that height i have to multiply by that n 
if i am having a center line rotation instead of uh, because i have to reach only at the center line right i no need to go out to this side i just have to reach only half so i have used the formula of b by 2 okay so but both the, this is not even a formula it's just a common sense ebn how this one came i have showed you here and for half uh, if uh, my rotation of superposition is with respect to only center line then i have to use only e b by 2 into n okay so remember the b is a total width plus extra widening so you should know to include extra widening also in your formula okay so third case based on topography is uh, sorry ircs given directly the formula to use 2.7 v square by r v is in kilometer per hour and for steep and hilly terrain they have given this formula v square by r substitute v in kilometer per hour radius in meter you will have your ls3 so now you have ls1 you can see ls1 you have ls2 and you have ls3 so ls will be maximum of these three values as i shown before so ls2 and ls3 okay so you have to set out the transition curve i told you already what is the shift you can see in this figure you see this is a straight road and there is a horizontal curve and this is a straight road there is a horizontal curve you can see this is the horizontal curve okay because i have provided a transition curve you can see this is the transition curve t1 to d and because i have provided transition curve i have provided f2 t2 okay so i hope this is the circular curve now this is the transition curve you can you can see this one what is the transition curve the red colored line i have drawn is a transition curve if i didn't provide the transition curve you can see t1 dash to t2 dash is the circular curve you should it would have been okay if i didn't provide anything this will be the circular curve since i provided the red color this became the circular curve okay so there is a shift right if you do the geometry you will have this formula ls square by it is ls actually the ls is nothing but the transition length of the transition curve we got in the previous slide you substitute that one here ls square divided by 24r will give you the how much will be the shift of the main curve inwards okay and delta is the deflection angle it is nothing but n uh, we will see in depth in more detail about this uh, n deflection angle in the um, uh, summit and valley curve chapter coming in next few sessions okay and in delta is is the spiral angle mostly it's not important anyhow if they ask you l by 2r ls by 2r divided into 180 by pi if you would you will have your angle okay what is the angle it is transition curve is provided you can see what is the delta s also from the figure so remember this is important actually the shift most of the questions they will ask you directly to calculate the shift so you need ls right to confine the shift so you have to do all the procedures to come here and then find the shift of the main curve okay so with this uh, this session is over related to the theory of transition curve we will solve problems in our next session okay so you can i am showing the questions here you can even pause uh, solve yourself and then come uh, come to the next session and see the answers okay so thank you and if you have any doubts you have a mail id here you can contact me anytime and all the best see you in the next session